God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, I want to share something about that dance because as Sister Tammy was dancing, the Lord brought back to remembrance something that took place when the Israelites were set free for the first time when they crossed over the Red Sea. And as soon as the last person touched land and the waters covered and swallowed up the enemy, it was Miriam that came out dancing, mm -hmm. rejoicing. Mm -hmm. And it was only Mary, and she took all the women. So see, this is nothing new, people. Mm -hmm. This is worship. Amen. Amen. But see, there's a lot of people right now that we've been hearing through the grapevine that this is not of God, oh, but wow. it is of God. Yes. 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 Because if you, can, if you can worship the Lord in music and in song, you can worship the Lord and dance. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 So this is scripture. Amen. And thank you again, Sister Tammy. Yes. 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 Again, we want to thank all our first-time visitors. Amen. We want to thank the Ministry of Helps that went with us yesterday. Our first major outreach. connecting with them and being part of what it is just the beginning yes. it's just the beginning Amen. of what God is going to do in this city Hallelujah. because nobody else is doing it but we are Amen. 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 and I know that it's going to get bigger and better yes. Amen. 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 and it's not about I tell you what I was up on that stage when the altar when the altar call came and I saw so many children yes. weeping yes weeping and God touching their lives yes. and it was such a blessing to see this event take place and it was such a blessing for this ministry yes. to be a part of what God is doing yes. in the city of Ontario yes. amen. Amen. amen but again I know that for some of you that, that were there yesterday if you're a first time visitor here and you got affected were you there yesterday? How many people were there? Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Amen. Amen. And we saw a lot of souls come to the Lord. People. And that's what it's all about. It's not about how big you want to get your church or anything. It's not about numbers. It's about reaching these yeah. people that Amen. need yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. But I thank God for this day. No, I thank God for this day. Because without the resurrection, nobody would be here, right? No. Amen. Amen. But there's so many things that the Bible talks about besides the resurrection. You know, God has been so good to his people. And sometimes people take advantage. They take it for granted that this is just another day. No, it's not just another day. This is the day that the Lord Come has come. Yes, yes. And we shall rejoice in the Lord in all things, in all ways. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you all for participating yesterday. It was a long day, it was a hard day, but it was a day that was worth Amen. it. Yes. Amen. Yes. And as your senior pastor, I want to thank all of you for being there and helping us. Your labor of love will not go in vain. Amen. Amen. Your labor of love will not go in vain. Amen. But today I want to bring forth a message. And there's so much that God gave me about the resurrection. You know, you think about it. Think about think about what happened over 2,000 years ago. Which is the greatest... What would you think would be the greatest event? The birth of Christ or the resurrection of Christ? It's both people. It's equal. One's better. One is not better than the other. You can't even begin to judge which is better. They're both good. They're both great. And God did a great thing with so many people. And that's what God wants to do with all of us. He wants to do great things in your life, people. God's not finished with us yet. Amen? 
So my 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 words of exhortation for all of you is to keep hanging on to the things of God. Yeah. Stay encouraged. Yeah. Pray for your loved ones. Yeah. Pray for the backsliders. Yeah. Pray for the unbeliever. Yeah. Because you know why? Because Jesus Christ is coming back. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, yes. Lord. Yes. No, Jesus Christ is coming back, ah, people. Amen. Amen. And he's just not coming back for the people. He's coming back for his people. Hallelujah. Those people who are called by his name. And there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be left behind. And there's probably already, and I, and I hate to say this, but you know what? There's probably already people in hell. And there's a lot of people in heaven. Yeah. Amen. And we have to continue to hold on. We have to continue to persevere. We have to be diligent. We have to keep on believing. We have to remain faithful. We have to be obedient to the word of God. We have to trust in his word. And we have to start loving one another. More than ever. Because that is the greatest commandment that Jesus gave us. He came with one commandment. And even Christians can't even do that yet. But we're going to have to let go of all this other stuff, people. Yes, amen. And start loving one another. Amen. Jesus, God said this, though. For God so loved the world that he gave up his only begotten son. That whosoever would believe in him would not perish. But have everlasting life. Amen. Yes, we will die. Our flesh will die. But as soon as we die, we live again. Amen. Yes. Tell somebody, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. And that's the title of my message. Amen. He's alive. Amen. No, he is alive. Yeah. He is alive. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, waiting for Father God to say, Go for my people. Bring my people back to me. And that's throughout the world, people. Jesus is coming back. Amen. You better get ready. Amen. You better stay ready. Right. You better stay prepared. Yeah. Amen. Because the enemy is going to want to come and bombard you with everything and anything that he can. He'll pull you. He'll cause you to go astray. He'll, 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 he'll bring the wiles of the enemy with tricks, deception, to deceive you in many ways. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy. Amen. Because the enemy would love for you to go back and serve him oh, yeah. to fall back into your iniquities. Mm. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go back. Right. I do not want to go back. Me neither. You know that word that Brother Jacob gave and my wife backed it up? I'm going to give you a little bit of testimony before I get into the word because it is for somebody in here. Because 34 years ago, that was me. That was me and my wife. Don't you know that we're a living testimony? Our marriage is our testimony. And if I wouldn't have surrendered to God on the day that God chose me to come in, we wouldn't be here right now. But there was a day that I heard the voice of God, and I repented. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But once I surrendered my life to God, oh my God, because what God started doing with us and through me. Especially me. Amen. So I encourage that couple that is here. You may be here by yourself. You may be praying for your husband or for your wife. Does it matter? Whatever you do, keep on believing. Amen. So what is the resurrection? Because from year to year to year, people, churches all over the world come with the same message, and we know the message, we've heard the message, year after year after year, but we can't take this message for granted. We have to take this message to heart, yes. and we have to keep it in our hearts. Even though you hear it over and over every year, we have to remind ourselves of what God did for us. For he took his son. He gave him up. 
for each and every one of us for our iniquities, for our transgressions. Amen. We serve a big God, a good God, a gracious God. Yeah. He is so gracious to us. Amen. Can you imagine if God was to deal with us because of our sins? Amen. So what is the resurrection? The resurrection is plain and simple, people. It's arising from the dead. Amen. So today I want to share a couple of things. See, because Jesus Christ wasn't the only one in this book. And there's probably millions of other people that have been resurrected throughout this world ever since the creation of time. Amen. But I, I want to share a couple of things about his death, his life, his burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Amen. But I want to share something with all of you. I found something. And it's, and it's so worth speaking about. And, it's, and it, this is what it says. It's for 30 pieces of silver. Let me read this to you. This is a sad but true story. From the Bible it came. And it tells us how Judas sold the Savior in shame. He planned with the council of the high priest that day. For 30 pieces of silver was the price that they would pay. 30 pieces of silver, 30 shekels of shame, was a price that was prayed for Jesus on the cross where he was slain. Betrayed and forsaken, unloved and unclaimed. In anger they pierced him. But he died, he died not in vain. Amen. For it was there on the hillside, the multitude came and found our dear Savior, and they took him away. Thorns were crowned around his head, and his garment of purple showed the blood stains of red. Far off in the mountains, with his face towards the sun, Judas begged for mercy for what he had done. He gave back the silver, and his heart was filled with strife. Then there in the mountain, he took his own life. For 30 pieces of silver and 30 shekels of shame was the price that was paid for Jesus on the cross where he was slain. Mm -hmm. See, I don't know how you guys take that. But see, I know what God has done for me. And if it wasn't for the resurrection, I wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here. But because of the love, see, that's the key, people. Because of the love of God that he had for his people, he was willing to give up his only begotten son. And this is what he expects from all of us. That we're going to have to learn how to walk in the true love of God. We're going to have to learn to really forgive one another from the heart and not just speak it and say it. We're really going to have to know who we are in Christ. We really have to know the Christ that is in us. Is Christ really in you? Amen. Are you willing to sell out yourself just like Judas? Are you willing to sell out and go back into the things of the world? Because we were all there at one time. I don't know what you guys were involved, but I know a couple of people in here, and I know their testimonies. Amen. I know what you've been through and what you're going through. Amen. But would you be willing to sell out your own salvation just to go back and just get a little high here and there? To tap into the things of the world? To get back into your flesh? To satisfy your flesh? Don't you know that this flesh, this body that you live in is going to die? And on the day that you die, we're going to be before the Lord. Amen. 
So we, we're, we're going to have to be so careful, people, of our walk from this day forth. Yeah. You know, there, there were so many people yesterday that gave their lives to the Lord. And, 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 and probably you don't know where to go mm -hmm. from there. And I'm hoping and believing that those people are going to come here. Amen, amen. So that we can train you and teach you the ways yes. of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Amen. We want to disciple you. We want you to be what God wants you to be. See, God created each and every one of us for a reason. See, all of us have purpose in here. We have a destiny. And God has laid out a plan for each and every one of us. The Word of God tells us in the book of Jeremiah 29, 11. For the, for, oh my God. Come on now, come on now. Yes. For the plans, he says. For the plans that I have for you. Plans of hope and of a good future. Yes. I, I don't know about you, but I, I want that hope and yes. I want a good future. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. But as long as we continue to believe and, and stay grounded and rooted and grow in the things of God, because the issues of life are going to come, people. Mm -hmm. No, they're going to come. Yeah. And the enemy is going to want to attack you more than ever now. You know why? Because he knows that time is getting short. Right. And he will come and he will tempt you with anything and everything that he can. Mm -hmm. But you're going to put, you're going to have to put on, oh my God, the armor of God. Yes, That's man. another yeah. teaching. Yes. Amen. We're, look, we're going to have to protect our minds. The Word of God tells us in the book of Philippians that He will guard your heart and your yes, mind. Amen. amen. So that you can able to continue to live in peace. Amen. amen. But what can we say about the resurrection? Let, let me give you just a couple of things before I get into the, into the meat of this message. Amen. Let me give you a couple of people that were resurrected in the Bible. The widow's son or Elijah. You know, it, I, I, when I was reading, oh, God gave me so much, people. And there's always something happening in the upper room. Amen. Amen. The widow's son, when Elijah came and he raised the widow's son from the dead. The Shunammite son, Elijah, again, he was in an upper room. Amen. The unnamed man. Oh man, when I read this, it's such a short, it's such a short verse of what happened to this man. It's found in the Second Kings 13, 20 and 21. Amen. There was a there, there was a time where the raiders were going to out to the land, conquering and destroying the things that belonged to Israel. And one of the raiders had died in battle, and two of his buddies were lowering him into this vertical vertical tomb. And they were lowering him down like this. And all of a sudden, the rope began to shake this way. And all of a sudden, little did they know that Elijah's bones were at the bottom of that pit. And as soon as that dead man touched the bones of Elijah, he came back to life. It's, 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 it, it, you, you can't even begin to comprehend that, people. But see, it's the power of God that brings back, it brings life to people. Amen. And I read that and I, I, I stayed there for a little bit just <coughs> meditating on that verse. You know, what does it take to bring someone back from the dead when you know that they've been dead and dead and they're, they're just dead? And all of a sudden the Lord just brings them back to life. Amen. And, and I believe that God has given us so many examples about the love and the joy and the peace of God from Genesis all the way to Revelation, people. And all we have to do is grab a hold of it, study the Word, read the Word, get involved in church, come to church. Don't come to church when you feel like it. Come to church because God wants you to be. Amen. Amen. I'm serious, people. It's important to be in church. That's right. That's right. You know what? The cares of this world, you can set aside. Put your little agenda to the side and come in and be with us and, and worship with us and pray with us and, and hear the word of the Lord. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. See, because the word tells me that faith comes from hearing and hearing comes from the word of God. And how else are you not going to hear it unless you come to church? Oh, Pastor Bob, I can turn on TBN. 
I can turn on Daystar. I can do this, but it's not the same. The Lord says, don't forsake yourself from assembling with them. That's right. Not when you feel like it. Amen. And then Jesus raising up Jairus' daughter. Do you know what happened? They went and they found Jesus. And the man goes out. The father goes out looking for him. My daughter is dead. She's been dead. And, and Jesus said, I will go to her. And he goes and he goes into this house. And all the women, the wailing women are outside the house just, mm-hmm. just weeping and crying and, because this little girl is dead. Mm-hmm. And Jesus looks at all of them. For she, she is not dead. So you know what he had to do? He had to get every unbeliever out of that room. He had to clear the unbeliever out of that room in order for him to do what he had to do. And as soon as every unbeliever went out, he laid hands on her, spoke the word, and life came back. Hallelujah. I know about life and death. Me and my wife have experienced that. We have seen people on their deathbed come back to life. Amen. Okay? We have seen this. We have witnessed this twice. This is why I believe so much in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because it can happen at any given time. But see, you've got to have enough faith to believe that it can happen. Amen? It doesn't happen all the time. But I don't know why God does what he does. But he does. So let me give you a testimony of what we witnessed. Okay? Because 15 years ago, when her grandmother was on her deathbed, she was getting ready to die. She hadn't eaten in 10 days, and they were giving up hope and everything. We were living here. We, we got on our vehicle. We went back to Tucson. We went into the hospital room, and her uncle was outside. And I says, Brother Frank, how are you? He says, well, I'm not doing too good, Bobby. He says, my mother's on her deathbed. She's getting ready to die. I said, brother, I says, where's your faith? He says, I have no faith. I says, brother, I says, she ain't dead yet. So me and my wife, we went in there. And all her sisters, her nephews and nieces were all there. This is the great grandmother. And she's been, she's on her deathbed. She hadn't eaten for 10 days. She's, she's, you know what they look like after not eating for 10 days and they're getting ready to die, right? I don't know if you witnessed that before. Mm-hmm. So we walk in, and me and my wife, her sister's a believer, her brother-in-law's a believer, and all we begin to pray, and guess what? God started sifting out the people. Mm, hallelujah. All the unbelievers that were not saved got out, we closed the door, and we had a Holy Ghost time. In. Amen. 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 We prayed, Amen. we prayed. I got slain in the spirit in that hospital room. <laughs> I fell over my brother-in-law. The prayer was so hot and heavy. I'm serious. I'm not joking. This is a true story. And we're all praying and believing. And after everything, the prayer went down. And we all walked out. And then they all came back in. Guess what? The next morning, the lady wakes up. Grandma wakes up. She says, I'm hungry. Amen. You know that she lived 10 more years after that? Wow. Wow. A prayer of faith, people. Yes. God resurrected her. And they couldn't believe it. And even till this day, they're still out there unbelieving. But little by little by little, they're coming back. But you know what? We're not, we're not, we're not giving up on them. Don't give up on your family members. Because God can turn it around. Amen. I don't care what their lifestyles are. I don't care what they're addicted to. I don't care what they're going through. God can bring those yes. dead things yes. back to life. Yeah. Amen. We have seen this one too many times. This is why we have this passion to teach and preach. And this is why God has brought us to this city. We have testimonies, people. I have testimonies of what God has done in my personal life. When I was up to no good. And how God brought me out of that and brought me back behind. Man, I shouldn't even be here. I shouldn't even be standing behind this pulpit. But he took all those dead issues 
They were in my life, and he gave me a new life. Amen. I could sit here, I could stand here and give you testimonies, the visions, the dreams that God gave me, and the things that became real. Oh, my God, people. This is why I know that there is a God. No, there is a God. That's right. Amen. There is a God, people, and you, wait, you had better get online. You had better get on track. Amen. Thank you, Father. And, and look at when Jesus saw the funeral that was going through. He saw the widow crying and, and weeping as they were going through it. And he stopped the funeral. And he went and he laid hands on the son that was dead. And the son immediately came back to life. Amen. 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 You know what I believe? Now, thank you, Lord. Now I know why God left us this. Because, see, he was giving us an example of what was about to happen to Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And then we know the story about Lazarus and what took place. Amen? Amen. And then, and, and not only, not only did, not only did Jesus lay hands on people, and, 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 and brought people back from the dead. But also Peter did the same thing. With Dorcas. A woman of well renown, A rich woman. And when he found out. That she was dead. They brought him. And they, she, he laid hands on him. Guess what? He had to take all the unbelievers out of that room. Right. And guess where he was at? In the upper room. Mm -hmm. Amen. Even Paul, when he was given a teaching in the middle of the night at midnight, the Word of God says that there was a young man sitting on the ledge. In those days, they didn't have windows, only openings. And he was sitting there, and he fell asleep so deep that he fell down three stories. Mm. And, they, and he died. They brought him back up to the upper room. Mm -hmm. And Paul went and laid hands on him, and he came back to life. Yeah. So don't tell me that God can't bring nothing that is dead back to life. See, and I don't know if you have any issues in your life that have been dead. I don't know what you're going through in life right now. I really don't know. I'm not trying to hear it to, to read your minds or whatever unless God gives me a word to speak over you. Amen. But I can tell you this right now, people. Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. Yes. No, Jesus is alive. And he's coming back. Amen. 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 Let me give you a couple of things here. And why was the resurrection done? And it was done through the power of God. Mm -hmm. You know that nobody can bring nobody back to life but God? Amen. Huh? Can you imagine... I can't even imagine, I can't even comprehend what does it take to bring someone else from the dead? What kind of power do you need? What, what is it? What is it? I, I, I can't explain it. You know, God speaks a word and it, and, and it comes to pass. You know what it takes to have that kind of power? And God gives us enough faith to believe and it's only our faith. And it only takes a little bit of faith to move mountains. But to bring someone else from the dead? Look, we pray for people that are in the deathbed. We didn't bring them back to life. But God did something. That's right. That's right. Because of our faith. Come on, and that's all it takes people sometimes. Believe, believe, believe that you have enough faith to believe that those things that you're going through, your family, your, your family members, your friends, or whoever it is, whatever you're praying for. Amen. Because it's never too late, people. It is never too late. But the resurrection and the power, it comes through God. And let me give you a couple of reasons why God does what he does. First of all, it was to fulfill scripture. Mm -hmm. Amen? And it, and it was done for the forgiveness of our sins. Yeah. Because we've all sinned. That's right. And fallen short of the glory of God. Yeah. Because there's not one perfect person in this place. Mm -hmm. But I thank God for his mercy. Yes, thank you, Lord. I thank God for his grace yes, that was yes, given yes, to us. Yes. Amen. 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 
It was done for the forgiveness of our sins to justify the sinner. Mm -hmm. To justify the sinner. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> and it was to bring and give us hope. Mm, yeah. Oh my God, people. How much hope do you really have in God? Mm -hmm. Huh? No, seriously. How much hope do you really have in God? I got a lot of hope in God. I really do. I tell you what, one of the things that happened yesterday gave me a lot of hope to continue to do bigger and better things. Amen. And what we saw yesterday with One Life Ministries and every, how God connected us at the right time, at the right place yes. to do something for this city. And this is only the beginning. Amen. You know, we, we've been praying about this. I, 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 you know, I, I was there. I was overwhelmed. Yes. But see, I was overwhelmed, brother. You, you guys have no clue how I was overwhelmed. I'm looking at everything that is going on. Yes. And, and, and I think back on the first day that me and my wife opened ministry in our home. Nobody showed up. Nobody showed up for our first meeting. We opened the doors to our home. And I'm looking back nine years, and I'm looking there, and I'm standing in this school ground, and look what the Lord has done. Glory. Don't give up. Don't give up on your dreams. Because we've got hope. Amen. I'm serious, people. You have no clue of what God can do in your life. Thank you, Father. God wants to do so much for each and every one of us. And we cannot give up on God. Amen. So the resurrection was given to us with hope to make faith real. Oh my God, people. If you would have been there. Look, Jesus came and he warned his disciples. Three times he told them that he was going to be resurrected. He gave them warning. Three times he mentioned this to them at different, different times. But yet, they still didn't believe it. Now, if they really, truly, truly would have believed that this is what I believe would have happened. All the disciples would have been at Calvary. Yeah. But there was only one that showed up. <coughs> only one. Where was everybody else? Hiding. Running away like chickens. Because they were afraid of the Pharisees and the scribes and the Romans. But it took a lot of courage for John. To be at the foot of the cross with his mother. And, <coughs> and the women. <coughs> the women. My God, it should put us to shame, man of God. We need to start stepping up, man of God. There was only one man there. Where are, where are my disciples? Where are the men of God that walk with Christ? And didn't they believe that in three days he was going to be resurrected? Apparently not, because they weren't there. Only one. And look what God did with John. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So the resurrection was given to us to make faith real, to prove his sonship, to set him on David's throne, and to ensure his exaltation. Mm. Amen. And also to guarantee the coming of his judgment. And to seal the believer's resurrection through faith. <coughs> Listen to me, you guys. And I say this from time to time. And this is not to scare anyone. Everybody in this room... I don't want to die. I don't want nobody. I don't want my wife to die. I don't want my grandkids to die and my family to die. I don't want nobody to die. But we're going to die. It's, 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 it's not a secret. Yeah, we're going to... There's going to be sorrow and grief within our hearts because we that happens to us because of the love that we have for that person. But by God, people... Oh, my God, you guys keep picking this up. Come on. There's going to be a day.
day where we're going to see the face of Jesus. Yeah. We're going to see the face of Jesus. Yeah. And then he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yeah. You may come in into my kingdom, into my home. This is why he tells us this, look, in the book of John 14, 1, look, let not your hearts be troubled. Come on, don't worry about it. No, ya se. Te vas a morir, ¿y qué? ¿Y qué? Te vas a morir. And the Lord is telling us, don't let your hearts be troubled. The grief and the sorrow only last so long. The mourning lasts so long. And then you go back to living the way you were. And then everybody's buried six foot under or cremated, whatever you do. Whatever you choose, the way you want to get buried or die, it doesn't matter. Okay? Our spirit goes with God. Amen. We get resurrected on the last day, the last moment that you breathe your last breath. You get resurrected, people. That's the assurance. See, this is where faith comes in. This is where your faith comes in to believe in God, that there is a God that has the power to resurrect you. Yes. See, this is why it's so important to come to church, to hear the word, so that you can learn the word, so you won't be troubled. Amen. The Amen. Lord tells us, Lord, let not your hearts be troubled. Amen. For in my Father's house is many mansions. Amen. And I go there Woo. and prepare a place Hallelujah. for you. Amen. And if I go, there you too will Amen. be also with me. And then Thomas comes and he begins to question the Lord. Lord, how do we know where you're going? I already told you three times. <laughs> See how quickly people forget? Huh? But in my Father's house are many mansions. But no one comes to the Father but through me. Amen. For I am the truth. I am the way and I'm a, I am the life. He told that to Mary and Martha Amen. when Lazarus died. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in the resurrection? Yes, Lord, I believe that in the last days. But I am the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Come on now. This is what he said. I am the resurrection. Jesus. Though you were dead, you shall live. Hallelujah. Oh my God, people. Come on, come on. We should be rejoicing. I, I can hardly Woo! wait till I die. It sounds crazy, huh? But I can hardly wait till I die. Don't don't pray for me and bring me back. <laughs> if, if you see me on my deathbed, just pray, my God, he's going home with the Lord. He's going to leave us. Who's going to pastor the church? Oh my God. Oh, I got people that can pastor this church. <laughs> Amen? So don't pray for me. That's why Jesus says, pray for yourself. Amen. There's so much people. Mm. Man, I got so many notes to share with you. But you, are you guys getting the picture here? Yes, yeah. amen. Amen? That there is life after death? Amen. 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 He became... Oh, I love this. Thank you, Father. I, I, I just thank God that he opens up my mind to his word. He became an instrument of passion. <coughs> you know what passion is, people? Passion is something that you can't stop yeah. talking about. There you go. Passion yeah. is something that yeah. you're going to have to follow through because you want to just grab a hold yeah. of it Come on. And, 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 and run with it, man. Yeah. And, and you want, and you're not gonna, nothing's going to stop you Woo. because you have this passion to go after it. Yeah. I don't care what you're chasing in life right now. Mm. Don't quit. Don't quit, yeah. don't quit. Don't quit on yourselves. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because see, I could have easily, we could have easily, my wife was ready to say, nobody showed up. Mm -hmm. Nine years ago, nobody showed up. Jacob, Jacob was like this. Oh. Nobody showed up. We play some worship music, David. I give a little scripture to her. Come on, babe, let's go to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fellowship with one another. Oh, right. And next Saturday came around. We did the same thing, Brother Bob. 
We open the doors, I put aside welcome service in progress. Oh. <laughs> and we never gave up. Because you know why? Because God had put a passion yes. in our heart. Amen. Amen. We had been called into yes, ministry. Right. We've been, been chosen by God to serve Him. Not knowing that one day, people. See, because you, oh, people, you have no clue what God has in store for you guys. Amen. But if you have that passion to do something for God and for yourselves, just follow through. Don't give up on God because God hasn't given up on you. Yes. Amen. And He never will. He's always there for you. Amen. Amen. Yes. See, because this is what I'm saying. Yeah. He became an instrument of passion. Amen. Amen. And the pa oh, brother. Come on. And this passion that he had, you know why? Because he had so much passion to do God's will, it brought forth pain. Oh, my God. You mean I'm going to have to go through something? Oh. You mean I'm going to have to go through some pain? Yeah, it's called long suffering. Oh, it's part of the fruit of the spirit. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. It brought forth pain, mockery, condemnation, persecution, blame, shame, pointing of the fingers. Everything that God, that the Lord Himself, Jesus Christ, had in His heart to be the Father's will. <clears throat> he had to go through so much with so many people because he was speaking truth. And because he was speaking truth, the people couldn't handle the truth. And that's what happens with people. When truth is brought forth, and if you have sinned, the truth convicts you. Praise God that the truth convicts you. You know why? Because the truth is trying to set you free. But you're not allowing it because now I've had people in this church walk away from this church because we speak come the truth. Come on now, come on now. But the Lord told us to speak the truth right, in love. That's right. Right there, sir. <laughs> truth in love and speak it to all the families right here because this is your ministry, Bob. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's all we do. That is the best thing you can do with each other, people, is speak truth. Mm -hmm. Why would you want someone to lie to you all the days of your life and then begin to believe them? And then at the end you find out that they were lying to you. Come on now, come on. This is why God gave us the name of the church, that we may speak the truth in love. Amen. That's our foundational scripture, Ephesians 4.15. 4, Amen. But see, Christ had a passion. And the same passion that he had, we should have that passion. Mm -hmm. I don't know what your dreams are. I don't know what your goals are. But whatever you do, doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. Oh, my God, people, you're never too old to do something new. Mm -hmm. And you're never too young to do something new. Yeah, right. Don't ever limit yourself. Don't ever let nobody tell you that you can't. Because the Lord says that you can do all things. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. I, and I've said this before. Oh my God, people. I, I have no education. I used to hate to read books. I went up to high school for six months and I dropped off. Because, because things were so terrible at home. With my father and mother and everything, I, I, I grew up in a broken home. But I thank God that God touched me and yeah. turned me around. Yeah. 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 That's why I'm saying, see, I shouldn't even be here. But God knows. Amen. Yes. God knows your heart. Yes. Yes. So don't give up on your passion, people. So he became an instrument of passion, and the passion brought forth pain, mockery, condemnation. For what? To disqualify him as the Son of God. Yeah. It's like when he was hanging on the cross. If you are the Son of God, come, on now. come down from that cross. Oh, huh. But he hung on there for all of us. Yes, yes. Till the end. <laughs> 
Are you willing to go to the end? Mm. For yourselves and for God? Mm. And for each other? No, for each other? And his famous last words on that cross. Forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they do. Do you really don't know what you're doing when you do it? Huh. <clears throat> yeah, we do. Yes, you do. <laughs> you know what you're doing. That's right, that's right. You know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You know what you're speaking. You know what you're hearing. You know what you're dabbing into. Mm -hmm. You know that you know, people. Oh, yeah. oh you foolish Galatians. <laughs> <laughs> To disqualify him as the Son of God and to bring down his authority. See, people, we can't even begin to imagine what it's going to be like to be in heaven. We hear about it, we see movies, we see the colors, little things changing here and there, you know. How many people saw that movie? What's it called? The Shack? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> God's not female. No. That's right. Thank you. It's Hollywood. <laughs> They're just trying to give you an idea of what it's like. Mm -hmm. Praise God for ideas. But that's not the truth. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So don't get swayed and pulled away. Oh, God is a female. <laughs> Amen. He was, in will he was willing to endure the pain, the insults, and the shame. And he did it for all of us. Oh my God, people. What is it? No, I, I need to say this. What's it going to take for us to change our ways? What's it going to take to really, really, really change our ways? To really start walking in the love of God. No, to walk in the love of God. What is love, anyways? It's a deep, internal, emotional, feeling that we get towards something or someone. You know that people love their dogs more than their wives? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might tell your wife, because dogs don't complain. <laughs> Seriously, it's, a, it's a truth. And, and, and you know, you can go out there and take your 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 dog for a walk, and it's like kibble with the bits. He's so happy to see you. No, that dog is so happy to see you. And he's scratching at the windows and the doors. And he could know it's, it's your vehicle. And he's already barking. Man, can't, can't we love one another like that? I'm not saying that you guys are dogs. But can't you love somebody like that? Huh? That you can hardly wait to see them? He jumps all over you and just licks, to, licks you to death? Huh? <laughs> Welcome home, my good and faithful servant. <laughs> but it works both ways, people. Yes. We should be so quick to open that door and to see your loved ones. Man, you don't have to wait for an invitation. Man, my grandson comes over. Man, if he, if he had a key. <laughs> I had to take my keys all the way all the way from my son. <laughs> Not because I don't want them in my home. 
Amen. I remember one time we came home. I have, to, I have to say this. It's funny though, okay? If you give your kids a key to your house, but they don't live there, they're going to come in. I remember coming home one day, me and my wife, we walk into the living room, and we say, what's that smell? What's that smell? All of a sudden, we start walking around the house. One of my boys came in, and they went to the bathroom and left. <laughs> and they didn't turn the fan on. <laughs> it happens all the time. Hey, Amen? Come on, we're humans. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Old base 101. Hey, Amen? But you know what? My grandkids come in, my sons come in. Hey, Dad, you got anything to drink? Yeah. In the refrigerator. Hey, Dad, you. Hey, Dad. That's the way it should be. That's right. We're supposed to have an open relationship with our loved ones. It's the same thing in the church, people. Listen to me. When those doors open up, we should be waiting to hug on each other, fellowshipping with one another, loving on one another. Because that's the commandment that God gave us, people, is to love one another unconditionally. Don't put conditions on people. Well, you know what I I ain't going to hug that person no more. You just don't know what I've been hearing. <coughs> Amen? Thank you, Father. He was willing to endure the pain, the insults, the shame from his birth to his life and everything, even up to the whipping post, the crown of thorns, the judgment, even up to the cross, and finally to the tomb. But thank God for the resurrection. Yeah. Yeah. The two place. Yeah. Man, I tell you what, man, I got so many, yeah, yeah, I have to stop. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but you guys know the story you guys know what needs to be done in your lives? So I encourage each and every one of you to think about this day. Why did God do what he did with his only begotten son? So what do we have to do with each other? Are you willing to give up certain things in your life? Huh? Your attitude, your way, your conduct, the way we treat each other? The intents of your hearts? Oh my God, don't let any thought come into your heart that is not of God, people. Because see, it's like this. God knows your heart. Yeah. No, God knows your heart. Yeah. He knows what you're about. And He knows what you're going through. And God can heal your heart. Because maybe you've been wounded, maybe you've been hurt by somebody or someone. You know what? You're going to have to learn how to forgive them and forget about that hurt. Yes. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Why don't we stand up so we can pray?